Hey there, it's Morty Golding, and uh, I saw this great question by uh, designer Kerry uh, Lebuski, or Lebuski, uh, pardon me for mispronouncing your name, uh, on the Illustrator Forum uh, discussion group at uh, LinkedIn. And she was having issues, or I was saying, having a challenging and tough time recoloring artwork uh, inside of Illustrator. She had purchased uh, a stock image from iStock and uh, needed to change some of the colors and uh, expressed uh, some issues with how much time it took her to actually get at the results that she wanted. Now, Illustrator has incredibly powerful recolor artwork um, features. So I wanted to see if I could help her out by providing maybe an easier way to do what she was looking to do. So I asked her if she'd be willing to share her files with me. So I'll jump over to Illustrator here and I'll show you that this is the image that she purchased from iStock Photo. Um, and if you look over here on the left, this is the image that she eventually wanted to get to. So she really wanted to change the colors of the flowers themselves, but the petals are made up of so many different shades of colors. And if I took a look at this, I would likely say this probably was, you know, live traced or something else like that inside of Illustrator where they started out with a photograph and then traced some of it just because I can't imagine somebody actually drawing all these vectors. Um, so you have all these you know, wonderful shades of colors here. But ultimately, if you want to control that color, that can be, I mean, just considering how many pieces of individual artwork there are inside of this file, you know, just go into outline mode here, what you're looking at, it is not a pretty sight. So how do you control this? So here's how I might go about that. Uh, and I'll share a couple of tips on that using the incredibly powerful recolor artwork feature inside of Illustrator. So I'm going to start off by first getting rid of the layers here that I don't need. It's one of the nice things about good stock images where they actually provide everything on layers. So I've taken all that basically out of the equation. And now I simply have just this layer of the flower selected. I'll also point out, by the way, that in this file, there are some additional swatches that you'll find here. And these are global swatches. They have a the little white little triangle on the bottom. Incredibly powerful. You should always try to use um, global colors where you can because that will let you make adjustments uh, more interactively and more and, and in a more powerful way later on. So these swatches are sitting here in this document. If they were not already here, I would have added global swatches or Pantone swatches. But in this case here, the global is going to be fine. We're going to use these a little bit later. Specifically, let's say the global red maybe, and then maybe we'll choose the yellow or the squash. We'll experiment with those. Um, and again, in an effort to try to get a little bit closer to where Kerry was trying to get with this image here. So I'm going to start out by first making a selection. I'm going to select all, Command A. I only have one uh, layer here active anyway, so all of the artwork on this layer becomes selected. The great thing about recolor artwork is that it works on whatever you have selected. So I can make changes to areas of color just by selecting artwork that I wanted to. So I could, I mean, just to so you're aware, there are ways to select ranges of color inside of Illustrator. Like if I wanted to select just the ones that are kind of purple in, in nature, and I'm colorblind, so forgive me if I make reference to a color and it's really something else. Um, there is a magic wand tool inside of Illustrator, as you, as you know. And the magic wand tool, if you double click on it, brings up a dialog that allows you to dial in a tolerance. So right now the tolerance is set to fill color. So if I click on any, you know, the petals right here, let's say one of them is in the middle, it will select other colors that are within a tolerance of 20 uh, of that area. So I can hold down my shift key and continue to select on other areas. And now I've pretty much selected the colors that are kind of purplish in nature, I guess you can say. And then technically I can go ahead now and I can just recolor artwork on this area if I wanted to. I could change them all to one color if I just wanted to make it flat art, or I could do other uh, things I can group them together to make things easier so on and so forth and of course I can adjust the tolerance setting to adjust the sensitivity by allowing Illustrator to go further or only you know within a much more smaller range of color selection for that as well and this is actually a really cool feature a lot of people are not really aware of the magic wand tool but it can do a lot inside of Illustrator for example you can have it only select based on stroke color or on stroke weight so for example if I click on let's say Right now, the tolerance is set to 5. If I click on a 3-point stroke weight, anything from 0 up until um, technically 8 uh, you know, points in width would be selected. So it's a way to select an entire range of stroke colors. Uh, you can also choose by opacity and blend mode. Very, very powerful feature. Uh, but for now, I'm not going to use that. And, and one of the reasons why is because, well, this artwork really is only working with feel, fills. But my artwork may contain 
this color applied or these range of colors applied to both fills and strokes or within gradients or within patterns. So I really, I, I'm stuck. If I select them, I'm still bound by the limits of what a regular selection would allow me to do. For example, if I select artwork that has a black fill and a yellow stroke, I can only choose to change the fill color and the stroke color as two separate things. But in this case here, I have the ability to just say, I don't care if it's a fill or a stroke or any gradient. I just want to change the colors across the board. So that's what makes the recolor artwork feature so powerful. So once again, I'm just going to select all my artwork here. I'm going to go up to the uh, control panel here and click on this little color wheel, recolor artwork. Go ahead and open that up. And that opens up this dialog box. Probably one of the most powerful features in all of Illustrator. But unfortunately, it's just very, very difficult to figure out how to use. Um, and there's lots of different settings hidden in, in, everywhere. But just as a basic overview, there's two buttons at the top here called Edit and Assign. If I have artwork selected, and I now choose Recolor Artwork, so Illustrator figures, oh, I probably want to change the colors to that artwork. So it, it allows me to assign other colors to that. But if I go to the Edit button here for a second, I just want to give you an idea about what Illustrator is doing. It's taking the entire color spectrum, and it's identifying all the colors that are used right now in this selection. And it's identifying where those appear on the color wheel. So it's like Google Maps. It's letting me know exactly where each color lives. So I can see this visually here. It also tells me if I go to Assign that there are 392 colors used in my selection. A lot of colors. But I know that I want to work specifically within a certain area of colors. So let's understand what this means here. If I scroll down here, I'm going to get basically 392 settings here. And all that this means is that Illustrator is identifying each individual color. And then it's telling me that I have the ability to define a new color for that one color. So in other words, I could tell Illustrator, whenever you find this color in my illustration, I want you to replace it with something else. And the, the way that we refer to it as replacing it is what this arrow is. So in other words, we kind of read this as a mathematical equation. Look for this color in my document and change it into this color. And we'll go into more detail about specifically how to change it. But for now, that's kind of what we're looking at. Now, Illustrator doesn't know yet what colors I want to change. So what happens is, is that by default, Illustrator will load up this dialog box and will remap every color back to itself. So it's just saying, OK, here's my color in this document. And Illustrator is going to change it to the same color. So really, ultimately, no change is happening. But that's, again, because I'm not giving any idea and any way or indication to illustrate what I want to change it to, right? So if I click on, uh, let's say, double click on just the new button right here, that brings up a color picker. More importantly, there's a color swatches option here. And I can choose, let's say, Latte, and then click OK. So now what I've, ton what I've done is I've told Illustrator, go into my document, find this one color, and change it to something new. OK, very simple, very basic. Of course, there are 392 colors here. It would be madness if I were to try to do that you know, throughout all these things individually, which is kind of silly. Now, uh, uh, one of the limitations of this dialog box is that there is no way to undo uh, undo things. So I can't just hit Command, you know, Command Z to undo this. So I'm going to cancel out of this for a second. I'm just going to relaunch this dialog. So now that you have a little bit of a better idea, let's kind of dig deeper into really what we want to do. We want to identify all these purple flowers here, and we want to change them in one fell swoop to maybe orange or something along the lines of that red or, you know, let's pick a color for that and let's experiment what that might look like. So my first task is going to be to tell Illustrator I want to identify or select. I don't want to select the artwork. Again, we're above the artwork here. We're now in a world where there's all these colors. Think, think for a minute now as if I'm inside of Photoshop, not an Illustrator. I have the ability now to say just select colors. I don't care what kind of object they are, or if it's a fill or a stroke or a pattern or a gradient. So let's just think colors. I want to select a range of colors. And right now, all the colors in my document that I can choose from are the ones that are highlighted here on this color wheel, right? So let's go here for a second. The first thing I want to do is I want to start to kind of bring down my number here, 392. I want to limit my selection. So I could say right away, you know what? I want this to turn into you know, two or three basic colors, right? So I could just go to colors and I can choose three, hit the tab key. And what Illustrator does is it automatically groups all the colors inside of my document into three main categories, okay? It's really four. I'm, I'm not gonna talk about it in this video because it's beyond the scope, but 
black is protected. Illustrator assumes black is a special color and that it assumes I don't want to recolor black. I want to keep things that are black as black because black is a key color. And if there were white in my illustration, Illustrator by default would also protect white. But ultimately, what I've instructed Illustrator to do is to take all the 392 colors in my document and reduce them down to now only be three colors. Now, I'm not seeing what that looks like in my artwork because this checkbox is not turned on. But I'm going to turn that on now, recolor artwork. This is what my artwork would look like if I took it and I reduced it down to three colors, right? So Illustrator is taking all these colors right now and it's putting them into one row. So it's basically now, go back to our equation, all of these individual colors now get remapped to one new color. All of these colors get remapped to one new color. And all of these get remapped to one new color. Right? So that's kind of what's happening here. I see more than three colors here because Illustrator is using various tints of those colors to simulate different shades of those colors. But ultimately, it's three colors. So let's go back, though, to the Edit button to see what Illustrator did. It took all those massive amounts of colors, and it basically sorted them out. Illustrator uses a combination of things like hue and saturation uh, and brightness to figure out how to combine colors and how to make, treat them similar. So it was taking all the colors from this section of the color wheel and combining them to one color here. Let's go back to a sign for a second here. Let's kind of do this on a little bit. If going to three colors here and one big jump is just too much of a jump because I have no control over seeing exactly how I want to recall this artwork. So I'm going to go down to maybe like 20 colors. So now, here's the beautiful thing. I don't have to undo for that because I'm just telling Illustrator, no, no, reduce it down to 20. So now I have 20 rows of colors. Okay, And here I start to see, OK, this starts to make a little bit more sense. Let's go back to edit and see what Illustrator did. Remember that big mass amount of the population of colors in the you know, northeastern hemisphere of the color wheel? Now we've kind of reduced that down to these basic areas that are here. So Illustrator is kind of starting to identify families or colors that are nearest neighbors to each other and kind of combining them together. Um, but even so, still right now, 20 is kind of a lot. So let's kind of go a little bit more and maybe let's go to 15 just for the, you know, for this example here, right? So now, okay, I'm colorblind. So I look at these, I can see basic colors, but I, it's harder for me to identify different shades of colors. And more importantly, I look at these and I go, okay, this, I kind of figure out what that is. But where are they used in my illustration? How do I identify where these colors are used? So that's where this tool is really powerful. It's a little magnifying glass. If I click on it, all my artwork dims out. But now, as I click on this area right here, let's say this little button, what I've done is I've selected all these colors. And Illustrator will now identify or highlight where in my artwork that uh, those colors appear or where they're used. Now, I could do this at the individual level. I can click on one little swatch here, and Illustrator will just light up right now. I can see that's a little teeny color that's being used in these sp spots. But because I've now told Illustrator to reduce my colors down to 15, and it's grouped all these colors into like one big family, I can highlight the entire family, and now I can start to get a better idea of where these color groups or areas of color are being used inside of my document. So here's where we start to get to, to a little bit more of a powerful way of thinking, right? Like these are darker colors. I want those to pretty much stay. And here are colors that I use more on those red flowers. But I want to get to more of those purple flowers, which are right here, right? So I have here, let's say, this part here, these parts, let's say. So what I can do is I can manually, now that I've had Illustrator kind of automatically combine these families together, I can go now a step deeper by manually moving colors. So I could take, let's say, this area right here, and I can click on this and drag it up, which I, I'm telling Illustrator now, combine all these colors together. I'm going to click on this area again, and you can start to see that now I see more of the colors for those areas. So I'm basically now selecting these areas of the flowers that I want to work with. So this gives me far more control. And I can take a look at some of these flowers as well, or the parts that these colors that are being used. Now, these colors right now are not ones that I'm interested in changing at all. So I'm just going to take these, and I'm going to start grouping them together just by dragging on the ends here. Remember, if I, you don't see it unless you hover over it. This is one of the issues that I have with the user interface right now is that there are buttons that not only <laughs> are there 100 buttons here that all have various incredibly powerful meanings to them. Um, but some of the buttons don't appear until you hover over them. So you have to know that they exist. It's a kind of like a little secret handshake kind of thing. So I'm just going to go ahead now and kind of group all these together. Let's kind of come down to 
these colors here, that's like that yellow flower down there in the bottom. So I'll go ahead now and drag, combine those together. So I'm doing this kind of basically, but I know I have this area here. Let's kind of put these together too. This is definitely the red, and these look like they go together too, so I'll go ahead and I'll drag those together. And I'm just basically now doing my own color um, uh, reductions, I guess you want to say. And I'm now starting to move things up. I want to move things up so that it's just easier for me to work with these and control them. So this one is going to go all in here. And then I have basically these two areas to work with as well. So let's bring this guy up. And let's bring this one up over here as well. So ultimately, remember how before I had told Illustrator to reduce my illustration down to three colors, but Illustrator did its own figuring out on what to do. So what I've just done right now is I've basically created three major areas right now of color in my document based on how I want to now think about the colors. So I'm, you know, it's this, I get the same result, but by starting out at 15 and then you know, having Illustrator do the major groupings for me, and then me now uh, going into that and figuring out, okay, how I want to, you know, put these colors together, I have far more control, right? And honestly, like, if this were something that I were not just teaching somebody how to do, I might spend a little bit more time. I may have gone to 25 colors so that I had an easier time to kind of start to think about how I want to group those together and get, get more control over individual tints. But now I basically have three major areas of color. Now, the truth is that all I want to do at this point is I want to recolor these purple flowers. I don't want to touch the yellow ones or the red ones. So I'm going to go to these arrows here. and I'm going to click on the arrows for the other two. So now you just see a line, you don't see an arrow. And what that means is that the equation never goes through. Illustrator selects all these colors, but it doesn't change them. It like it allows me to disable that. Again, the, way, the word we use is basically we refer to them as we protect these colors, meaning any change that I make does not happen to these colors. So if you think about it, if I scroll through my entire list right now, right, what's the only thing that's changing? All the swatches in this row are going to change to a new color. So I've now used Illustrator's Recolor Artwork dialog box for the first step. I've reduced the selection down to the range of colors that I want to work with. Okay, So now I want to choose what color that goes to. So I'm going to click on the Recolor Art button. This is not a preview button, obviously. This is something that allows me to just tell Illustrator, yes, go ahead and recall the artwork. Uh, because I may sometimes come into this dialog box just to do some of the analysis that I was doing. Like identifying where can I find colors in a document. If I were in prepress, for example, I just want to look at a very complex document and identify where colors are. I might use this tool with that magnifying glass over here to help me understand where certain colors are being used into pre-flight or to do something like that. But I may not want to change any colors. So that's why the recolor art button is, it has, it has that option. But now I do want to recolor my artwork. And I've gotten to the point where I know that I protected the areas of color that I don't want to change. So now I'm going to choose what color I want to change it to. I'm going to double click on this swatch, go to color swatches, and I'll scroll down. I'm going to choose that global red option. Again, this is going to come back to be important why I'm using a global color. So now if you take a look, I was able to change the colors now of this orange. Now there are other areas here of darker parts that I probably should also be including in that selection. Again, th just for the purposes of going through this exercise, I didn't want to waste too much time on being specific, but I would have started, again, maybe by reducing my colors to 25 instead of to 15, right? Something like that. And that would have given me far more control of how I combine those colors to get them. But ultimately, you've seen that I've taken a range of colors, which in this case are all of these colors here that I've chosen, and I've chosen to remap them to this global red color. So when I click OK, because the Recolor Art button is now checked, it's going to now apply to that artwork. Now, the beautiful thing is that at this point now, I know that I'm going to send this to my client, and they're going to say, well, it's not really the red that I like. You know, Can you change it to something? Because I've used the global color, I don't even have to select my color anymore. Now I can go directly to my swatch, double click on the global swatch, and make adjustments. Click on the Preview button. And as I make adjustments, I will see that happening inside of my file to those colors, to those flowers because I now have basically uh, moved all those colors now to global colors, which give me the ability to change the swatch color. And then any artwork that's used in, that doc in my document gets uh, modified as well. So those are the steps that I would take to um, recolor artwork. I hope that you find it uh, helpful for this. There's so much, I, I, I can't even begin to describe how much information there is 
uh, available inside of this one feature alone. If you want more information on this, I, I definitely check out that you go. I definitely recommend that you check out a, an entire course on Lynda.com that I've uh, recorded called Illustrator Insider 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 Training. Uh, Coloring Hard Work. That's the name of the course. It goes into detail of every single option or almost all the options uh, inside of Recolor Artwork and how this process works. And I hope that you have found this helpful. Um, if you want more information, hit me up on Twitter, find me uh, anywhere on the internet, and uh, hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful, colorful day.